in today's lesson, okay, we'll change it. We'll talk about today's lesson. Things change. Things are changing fast. People d are discussing and the, the, the all, all the conversations. They get really confused, and we want to focus on the basics. Help us to understand better. The basics. Who is Christ? Today we're going to emphasize that. Uh, and, and then we're going to talk about, in the future, God, is God real? Some people doubt that, especially in America. Most, most people are... The fastest fa religion in the country is atheist. It's okay. The fastest growing religion in America is atheism. Then they talk, ask, is the Bible true? And then they ask, what about creation? Wh wh what, wh where did that, is that, what, what should we think about that? And life, is that holy, is that sacred? Or is it okay to just kill people, right? Is, you see an old person who's weak, oh, we just, we believe in euthanasia. The baby, uh, a young baby, young child that's got a lot of health issues, we, we can just get rid of them. If you're healthy, if you're smart, fine, you get to live. But if you're old, weak, we're going to kill you, right? Euthanasia. If you're young and weak, yeah, same way. Uh, goes into abortion also. Life. We're talking about life. Many people doubt that life is holy. Yeah. If you're old and sick, yeah, you're diseased, yeah, we, we, we don't have any use for you in this world anymore, right? Sacred, holy. Sacred means holy, uh, special for God. He made life. It's God's decision to stop and to begin life. It's not people's decision. It's not your, de your decision, not my decision. Many people think, of the, think the opposite. Think if, if life is worthwhile, yeah, fine, you can go ahead and live. But if you're old, if you're sick, if you're weak, if you're hurt, if, if you're psychologically something, yeah, or yeah, if you're just bothering me, if you're a burden to society, we'll just get rid of you. Yeah. Or if a woman is pregnant, this is this baby alive? Right? Is it is it alive? But the culture thinks the pregnancy, that it doesn't matter. That life doesn't matter anymore. It's my body, right? And and this baby's bothering me. I'll just get rid of it. It's it doesn't fit into my lifestyle. Yeah. I'm young, and this baby's weak, right? The the. It's not independent of me. I can I can I can just get rid of it. It's my body. Mm. Many people think that way. The Bible is clear. These are basic things, and we're going to explain them in this series. Why? Why is? Why does evil happen? It sp it's, it spreads all. It's all over the world. Yes. How about the difference between men and women, and marriage, and the, all the confusion about that today? Is it all right for a man? To become a woman. Is it all right for a woman to become a man? For a man and a man to marry. Is it all right for a woman and a woman to marry? The culture, they're discussing everything, they're arguing about it all the time. But the basics is in the Bible. 
How about racism? Is there a sign for that? Yeah, danger, yeah, racism? Yeah, you just spell it. Yeah, finger spell it. Is that okay? Yeah. Do we understand that? Right, so it's white, black, yeah. For, for white, to hate the black, the whites to hate the black, or the blacks to hate the whites, or the a Asians to hate the Mexicans, whatever. Yes. Justice. What is justice? Who decides what justice is? Oh, Christian education. Why is that important? That's, yeah. Yeah, we, it's not that important. We're, we're just going to, as long as your people get educated. Uh, the local church, is that important? Uh, or is it, yeah, just something people do. And if you want to do it, fine, but it's not yeah, really that important. Yeah, school, that's more important. Yeah. Uh, if you have a job, that's more important than the local church. Money is more important than the local church. Or... What's, where's your priorities? So we're going to start off here in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. It says, are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. Hmm. What does that mean? Many good points that, uh, to this sentence. And we'll look into it. So, think about your beliefs, your perspective, your view of life. Many, many people have different views of life. Yeah things that they see. Their, well, their beliefs are different. It's like they're having different glasses and they're looking at the same world in different ways. Some people see life through, they call it rose-colored glasses, right? You know, maybe it's raining and gray day, day, but they put their rose-colored glasses on and it's sunny and everything's green. They take their glasses off and it's like this. And they put it on, they, it, everything's gray, it's, everything's sad, I'm all depressed. They put these rose-colored glasses on and it's Pollyanna. Everything is wonderful, right? And it's just whether you're, your perspective your perspective changes if you have these glasses on. These are imaginary glasses. It's your belief is like these glasses, right? Your, your belief is how you look at the world. It becomes your like perspective. If I believe uh, there's no God, there's no God in heaven. I, me and myself and you guys, we're, we're the world, and that's the end of it, man. If something bad happens, it's, that's the way it is. You got to fix it yourself. If you can't fix it, too bad. If there's pressure and it's building up on you, fix that yourself. If you can't fix it yourself, that's just tough. You just get used to it. It's my, it's me, my, mine. That's life. That's life. Okay. I it's messed up, man. It's not this. No, it's this. It's messed up. Or, if you believe God, if you believe God loves you, if you believe God is powerful, if you believe God has a plan, 
God is wise. And he wants the best for you and me. If when something bad happens, you say, hmm, well, I'm not real fond of this, but God, why, why is this happening to me? What's the reason for this bad thing happening to me? It's, you know, it's hard to go through, God. I'm not really ha enjoying this. I need your help. Please, fix this problem. Yeah, God, this year, I, I, I've been under so much pressure. As I, uh, my money's been gone. My debts are getting bigger. Uh, my work is bad. My boss is mean. Uh, and the, everybody I work with is lazy. They're, they all pile the wor their work on, on me. And I'm like, it's not fair, God. Please, help me. Show me what to do. Their pers your perspective is different. Take glasses off. That's your perspective. That's that's your how you see things. If you see clearly with the glasses on and not clearly without them, hmm, with the glasses on, it is too bad. Yeah, I don't need God, right? Life is all messed up. It's bad. It's going to happen. Or, if your perspective is different, you, you, see the, you see through your God glasses, say, God, please help me to know what to do. Give me wisdom. I don't understand what to do with this problem. It's just different. Imagine you're driving down the street and everything's blurry. You see something and it's kind of, you, you don't know exactly know where it starts and where it stops. You, maybe you have an eye problem. You go into her eye test and the optometrist puts that machine on you and you look through that and you say, wow, that's a whole lot of focus. And you put, he changes and it all becomes clear. What changed? The glass has changed. Not the, not your eyes. Your belief, all these things you believe, are your like your glasses to life, to the things that happen in life. If you doubt that there's a God, you, you see you see something that you don't understand, and it's out of so it's out like out of focus, and you. You just don't understand it. But if you believe God, believe the Bible, you see something happen, and you put your, your Bible glasses on, and you say, hmm, I understand why that's happening. Yeah, you understand you are tired. Your mom is sick. In pain, you know, you have burdens. But it's not all right if your mom is feeble and old. It's not all right. You, you can't euthanize her. That's not all right. It's clear that, it, that that's wrong. Somebody said, okay. But if you doubt there's a God, you doubt the Bible, you look at this old feeble person, there's weak, your mom is sick, old, weak, in pain, and she, she's a burden to you. She's, I believe it's okay to just end her life. And you ask your friend, hey, these, here's all these things that are wrong. And the, the, all these different issues, and they're, they're so confusing. But if you believe the Bible, if you believe there's a God, things become clear. It, it's just, uh, euthanasia is just wrong. 
You can't kill another person. It's very clear. There's no gray area there. Yeah, it's clear. But if you take your, if you don't believe the Bible, if you don't believe God, things can get out of focus. That's just an example. How you apply truth to help us understand. The world has got a different perspective than the Bible and God. God's perspective, they're different. For example, what's the purpose of life? For you and me, what's life being human? What's the purpose? What's the point? In God's view, the purpose is to glorify God in your life. That's the reason we're here, to glorify God. But the world, you're supposed to glorify yourself, right? You're supposed to promote yourself. You're number one. Look out for number one. That's, there's a conflict there. Uh, and what are, we supposed to, what are we supposed to do with our lives? What are we, what are we looking for? What, what's, the, what's the end of this? Holiness, according to God. The world says, no, happiness is the, the goal. The point, you're searching for happiness. You want, you, anything that will make you happy, just you find that and you become happy, right? But there's a conflict there, holiness and happiness. How about truth? What is truth? Truth? Is it, re, is it even real? It's, you can't, can you even know it, or is it just no truth? God says his word is truth. The Bible is true. The, the world says, I decide what's true. The Bible says, Jesus oh, it says, I am the truth, the way, the truth, and life. And the life, right. Jesus said he is the truth. His word is truth. Period. That's, that's no buts. The world says, hmm. Like Pilate. Pilate, when he was, Jesus was in front of him, he said, what is truth? The world <coughs> says, you can't know truth. Your truth and my truth, maybe they're opposite. You can accept yours, I'll accept mine. It's, that's just fine. You're allowed to go ahead. The world, the, the, some, peop the, some people say the world is flat. And yeah, if, if, if the world, if there's no truth, maybe it, may, that's true for you. How about your, your mood? Your emotions, yeah. God says, faith, my faith, my belief, changes my emotions, right? My mood. The world says, no, wait a minute. You follow your feelings. Your feelings decided, they're, they're, they're what's in control. Your faith, yeah, we'll, we'll work on that later. That's later. That's not as important. First thing is your emotions. Make sure you satisfy your emotions. For example, God's, God tells you to love your wife. Period. That's your job, your responsibility. You're, com you're commanded to love your wife. Love is a decision. It's not an emotion. Your emotions change, right? You decide to love your wife, your emotions will fit, will follow. They'll fit, they'll fit into that. But the world says, no. You're, yeah, you, this is, we've got a couple here that's 51 years. And your love is diminished, yeah. Okay, go ahead, you can get divorced. Your, your, your emotions are gone, your feelings are gone, fine. 
just go ahead and separate. I understand. It happens. People get tired of each other. That's life. Or say, no. My feelings go up and down. My feelings are really not that important. My responsibility is to make a decision to obey God, love my wife, and then my feelings will follow. So you can see the difference? Sin. God says, sin is real. It's everywhere. Every person is full of sin, was born a sinner. The world says, it's, it's okay. You, yeah, it's okay. Things that are called sin, they're okay. You can blame it on your father and mother. It's their fault that, it, that you have a problem. Mm, there's a conflict there. How about salvation? Going to heaven. The Bible says there's one way. Jesus, period. That's it. The world says, yeah, there's many ways to salvation. Many ways. Or, or this not real. Life is just confusing, then it ends, and that's the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the world says, yeah, salvation is not necessary. Right. Yeah. Who, who needs? If you're, you're okay, I'm okay, yeah, just let's keep, just go on, go on with life. Everything's the same old, same old. We look at this verse. The Bible is Christians are fellow citizens and families of, and family of God. Really? Fellow citizens. One country. One country for the Christian. Where's this country? Yeah. Heaven. He's it's God's kingdom. Right? We're, we're part of that kingdom. If we, and we're part of the family of God. A Christian and another Christian are brothers and sisters. Right? We're his children. One family. The family of the saved. Yes, got a question. Different family, God, children, fall around, children and brother and sister, one father, but the father separ separated from the earth, um, this is the, still the question, yeah, we're, we're cr every Christian, this is the answer, is part of God's family. One Father, that's God. All of us are brothers and sisters in Christ. It doesn't matter where you're born, doesn't matter where you grow up, doesn't matter where your, what your life is, what your color is, what your race. We're all his children. Ephesians 2.19 says, Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Uh, that's, that means you're not from another country. But you're fellow citizens with uh, saints, the Christians, and of the household of God. Fellow citizens mean you're part of a different country. Yeah, we're, we're, our con the country we're going to be part of is not here on earth. Our home is in heaven. Fellow citizens, that means together, you, a Christian, me a Christian, you and I, we, we're part of the same family of God, part of the same country. We're just traveling through this world for a limited amount of time, and then we're going to live in heaven forever. 
the household, meaning family, the household of God. Here's a question for you. As I read this verse, I learn, what do I learn? What does it mean, Ephesians 2.19? What's the truth here? Anything? So let, let me ask the question a different way. If you're a Christian, citizen belongs to where? Yeah, in heaven with God. So be careful. Many times we focus on the world. We focus on the earth. Focus on my house, my car, my land. These things that are mine, mine, mine. We say, hang on, all that's temporary. I don't belong here. Yeah. I'm just a pilgrim traveling through. I have a few things, but I'm like Back in life. Yeah. Back in life. Yeah, I don't have much yeah. Don't don't just try to take everything with you. You just use what you need for this life because it's going to be gone soon. Pack light. Because your home is in heaven, not here. That's true, yeah. Apply. Our perspective changes. It says, ye are no more, you know, foreigners. Yeah. So that before, we were strangers. We belonged to the world. Before we were, sal we were saved, before salvation, we, we were not Jews. We were not part of Israel. We were outside the family, outside that nation. After we became saved, that, that old, our old citizenship is gone. We, our new citizenship is now in heaven. Our, we're not foreigners anymore. Before we were, before we were saved, we were foreigners in heaven. We were strangers in heaven before we were saved. But after, after salvation, we're not strangers there anymore. We're not foreigners there. We belong. We're the, chil we're the children. The, cha the, the, the change comes through salvation. Paul is saying now, after salvation, therefore, Ephesians is written to Christians. Chapter 1 of Ephesians emphasizes the wonderful blessings of heaven, of being a Christian, of belonging, all the blessings God has for us, that we're, we're his children in his son. As we look back on salvation, it says, before you, you, before you were dead in sins, you were a dead... Dead men, dead men walking. walking. Yes. We're children of wrath. wrath. Children of disobedience. Rebellions. Disobedience. disobedience. We were aliens. We were strangers. We were outside Israel. Outside the family. Before Before Solomon. means you
today, the world, the, er the people on the earth, follow the devil. He's the prince of the world. Chapter 2 emphasizes that. It calls him the prince of the power of the air. But, and the, the people aren't saved, they follow the devil. They follow their prince. But in the future, that's going to end. We're at the great white throne judgment. That's, he was talking about that. People that aren't saved, they're going to show up there at the great white throne judgment and be judged and be found guilty and throw in the lake of fire forever. Christians, we're not going to be there at the great white throne judgment. We don't experience that. Because of our salvation, we're going to escape that, the wrath of God. It's so important we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior to be saved. The blessings start now, and they're very apparent later. Point two, the Christians are building with Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Sometimes we use to build others up. To build what do they? What do we build? We're going to look at this some more. Our foundation, the apostles, and the prophets. What does that mean? That that's the foundation. The prophets, like the Old Testament prophets, it says, "Thus saith the Lord," and it, then they wrote it down in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, the, the apostles came along. They saw Jesus Christ. They heard his words. They followed Jesus. And, and they were the leaders of the, new, of the Christians. They established the church. They wrote the Bible, all the New Testament books. The Old Testament and the New Testament combined is the Bible. That's our foundation, the apostles and the prophets. But the chief cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. Our lives, our foundation, Jesus is the chief cornerstone. The Bible tells us about that, uses us the cornerstone, oh the other, the, all the other stones are built in reference to this one cornerstone, right? They're, they're built on top of it. Okay? Okay, verse 21, Ephesians 4, 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth up into an holy temple in the Lord. You, as a Christian, are a little stone. Me as a Christian, I'm a, another stone. You are a stone. You, everybody, every Christian is a stone. And God puts them all together and makes a holy temple out of us. A holy temple? What does that mean? A beautiful building for worship, for worshiping God. The point, your life, my life, should be like stones in a temple. People look at those, the temple and they say, that's beautiful, and they're inspired by it. Think about other temples, other religions, you know. 
people, tr they try to make them beautiful, right? They don't want dirty temples. They don't want, uh, yeah, they don't want to look like homeless shelters. Don't want, yeah, or people living in tents. They, they, they say this is holy to God. This temple is a place where we honor God, where we glorify God. Your life, my life, should be like that. Beautiful. Holy. What for? So people can look at us? No. So that people can look at God and say, these people all, it's amazing. They have an amazing God. The building is you and me. His, and we are his building. The story. Somebody asked me a question right now. <laughs> okay, that, that, that question is going to be answered with the next verse here. We're in Ephesians 4.22. Christians are a building inhabited by God. Ephesians 4.22. This temple, our temple, the temple we're making, and the world's temple are different. In whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Holy Spirit. Habitation. A home. That's what it means, a home. A place where people live. The word habit. Yeah. But you add the word habitation, and that's a place that people stay. They dwell there. They live there. They call it their home. The world, all the other temples in the world, all the other religions... They're empty inside. There's nobody living there. There's no, there's no God there. But God's temple is you and me together. God is inside us when we're together. He lives in there, lives in our temple. We're full of God. All the other temples, they're empty inside. See the difference? What's different? Yeah, they're they're both beautiful. You know, the, I mean, the build the outside of the building, but inside, there's not there's nothing in there. There's just like dust. But in God's house, the th God's house God's house is only a house when His people are there. Other truths. It's important that all of us together, Christians, as we live our lives, each individual fits together. We're all different, we're all, but we're not all separate. We're all together. He uses you and me together to build his temple. Notice, in the Christian, as an individual, the Holy Spirit is inside of him. As a group of Christians, the Holy Spirit is there also. There's other verses that say that. That the, the Holy Spirit is, is in each person. And, and it says, when you're together, the Holy Spirit is there also. It's clear here in this verse also. It's important that you and I, together, are not divided, not separated. We're, we're together.
So let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are wonderful. You love us so much. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, for us. That we could become Christians. The world, their thinking is confused. They don't know Christ. They don't understand Christ. They don't understand salvation. Just these basic things. The, belie the basic beliefs. The basic, basic truths. For Christians, the truths of God are eternal. Jesus Christ himself is God. The eternal son of God. He became a human. He was born of a virgin. He lived, grew up, lived a perfect life, experienced all the temptations, but without sin. And then he took his innocent life, suffered, bled, and died, and took upon him the sins of all the world, every individual on the cross. He died, was buried, and th three days later he rose again. Proving what? His victory, that he conquered sin, he conquered hell, he conquered death. That is the true Jesus. That is God. He's not lower than God. He is supreme. He is almighty God. That Jesus is all, ne all that's necessary for salvation. How? Trust in Jesus Christ to forgive your, sin, your sins and to save you forever. That's just a basic truth. The world doesn't understand it. The cornerstone of the Christian, the salvation after that, I kind of lost the train of thought here. Please. Help us to understand that, that it's explained clearly, that our lives should be holy, beautiful, built into a temple for you, so the world can understand better. They, and if any person here is not saved, and God, if you're working in their hearts, please 